imagine coming to work every day and having no desk of your own. You have to find a place to sit every day. That's the way it works at the Toronto headquarters of consulting firm Deloitte. And there's about 18 different types of workstations um, okay. on, any given, on any given floor. Ryan Brain is a partner at the firm. He oversaw the team's transition to the new space and a new way of working. So none of these people sit in these chairs every single day? Um, some may decide to, but that we encourage them to move all throughout the office depending on what they may have. Um, on that particular day. Employees can choose from a quiet spot or a communal space, a meeting room or a cozy cubby for private calls. Wondering where to stash your personal belongings? Everyone gets a locker. The buzzwords in office design these days are flexibility and choice. It's a far cry from what Canadian author Douglas Copeland once called veal fattening pens. It was 1967 that the cubicle was first introduced. Companies snapped it up. It was sold to them also because it did save space, you know. It was, you didn't have to have all that real estate. By 2002, researchers were pointing out that cubicles can reduce productivity. Noise and distractions can make it difficult to focus. But even with Deloitte's fancy new office, which includes a gym and a meditation lounge, some staffers have resisted the no assigned seating policy, trying to lay claim to a regular spot by leaving a coat draped over a chair. It's like going to a resort and you see the beach towels on the beach chairs in the morning and you can't find a spot. And that's what we're trying to discourage. Nonetheless, he says feedback from staff is mostly positive and the new layout helps to attract and keep staff. The old ways of working certainly aren't dead yet, but they're definitely in transition. Diane Buckner, CBC News, Toronto.